Welcome back. Today, we will be talking about the reparameterization trick from variational inference. I'll describe how it works and where it comes from. Lots of problems in machine learning require you to compute the gradient of an expectation, where the expectation distribution itself is parameterized by the unknown parameters theta. Examples include variational inference, reinforcement learning, Bayesian optimization, and many others. In the reparameterization trick, one introduces a new auxiliary variable epsilon sampled from some other distribution, and then maps epsilon through a deterministic function, g theta of epsilon, to produce x, i.e. x is equal to g theta of epsilon. This allows us to write expectation of x sampled from p theta of x f of x to be equal to the expectation of epsilon sampled from p of epsilon of f of g theta of epsilon where we substituted for x equals g theta of epsilon. This in turn allows us to rewrite the gradient of the expectation of the original function as the gradient of expectation over epsilon of the nested function, which itself is the expectation of the gradient of the nested function. Now, where do these equalities come from? That's what we will look into next. Though widely used in machine learning, the story of the reparameterization trick actually starts from the change of variables theorem in statistics. To understand this theorem, we need three components. The first is a continuous random variable x sampled from probability density fx of x. The second is a monotone function h of x, which we map y through, so y is equal to h of x. And the third is the inverse of h, which we call g, x equals g of y. The theorem simply says, if x has a density fx of x, then the random variable y will have a density fy of y is equal to fx g of y times g prime of y. Before jumping to the proof of the theorem, let us actually understand what it says. Remember our three ingredients from before? Now let us define x to be a Gaussian distributed random variable with a mean mu and a variance sigma squared, y is equal to x minus mu over sigma, and the inverse x equals sigma y plus mu. To apply the theorem, we need g prime of y and the definition of a Gaussian density. Now, we simply can do some calculus to figure out fy of y. Before, let's remember that fy of y is fx gy g prime of y, g of y is sigma y plus mu, and g prime of y is equal to sigma. Therefore, we can write the distribution of fy of y as a sigma multiplied by a Gaussian, and upon further arithmetic cancellations, we can say that the distribution of y is nothing but a Gaussian centered around zero and has a variance one. All right, all good. So this theorem allows us to map between distributions of random variables like Gaussians in this case. To know how we prove it, and for extensions on high dimensional models like neural networks, stay tuned for the next part of the lecture.